when I left, I remember graduating from Wayne High School thinking, I want to get the heck out of here, and I never, ever want to come back. I never want to come back. I remember that thinking that way. But, you know, you leave a place that you really love, and when you come back, every year I would come back, it just felt better and better. And um, I knew I wanted to come back. When I realized that's what I wanted to do, I wanted to teach, I knew I wanted to be at Wainan High School. There's a movement taking place on Oahu's Leeward Coast. You may have seen a part of it without realizing you were seeing part of a movement that's bringing in jobs in place of drugs, hope in place of homelessness, and a culture of doing the right thing. And where would you have seen this? On television. Two yellow lines, paint on the asphalt. 12 inches that separate you from oncoming traffic. Public service announcements, TV commercials, student news videos, and music videos are some of the kinds of work of the multi-talented, award-winning high school students from Y&I High School's Sea Rider Productions. Okay, multiple choice. They're part of a movement that's encouraging young people to learn life and workforce skills and give back to their community. A movement led guided, nurtured by a graduate of Y&I High who returned to the community to live and work. This educator learned to find resources in and mostly outside the public school system to grow the largest and most successful high school multimedia production program in Hawaii. We'll sit down to chat with Candy Suiso next. Long Story Short with Leslie Wilcox, produced with Sony Technology, is Hawaii's first weekly television program produced and broadcast in HD. High definition, it's in Sony's DNA. Aloha no, I'm Leslie Wilcox of PBS Hawaii. Today's Long Story Short features Candy Suiso, a graduate of Y&I High School who's been teaching there for more than 20 years. Candy Suiso was trained as a Spanish teacher and she essentially taught herself the language of technology. Her team of teachers is showing students how to use print, audio, video, the web. Candy Suiso works to obtain funds to give students the multimedia tools they need to succeed, and she works to give them the communication skills they need to know, asking questions, seeking different perspectives, presenting a balanced story. And just as importantly, Candy Suiso teaches Y&I students to believe that they can achieve. And boy, have they. I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to give back to a community that was very good to me. Uh, I really felt that that's where um, I was the most needed. It felt right. I wanted to be in, I wanted to be home. I wanted to be in a community that raised me. And it was the right thing to do. I just felt that that was the right thing to do, and I, I, it was the right decision when I look back. Much of what you've done at Y&I High School wasn't done um, really within the system. You had to find ways to equip yourself and your students with grants. You had to become a, a grant writer mm -hmm. to, to get the proper equipment, the space. Mm -hmm. There's within the DOE there's so many limitations and there's only so much money to go around and part of our success is I believe we've learned to work around the system and been very successful in going up like you said going after a lot of grants a lot of support pulling together partners pulling together people that believe in you that's been our success um, we had to prove ourselves you know like you said the right people at the right time started to notice these students and started to give. And these the were big grant makers, <laughs> Kellogg Foundation. Recently, I mean, you were getting yeah, in the, hundreds of thousands of dollars in grant money. We were, yeah, we were able to secure a couple HUD grants, federal government grant for the federal government. We received another federal, um, the Native Hawaiian Education Act another federal USDOE grant, and recently uh, W.K. Kellogg Foundation grant, back to back. But prior to that, it was the little grants that we were able to get, little donations from people like the, you know, Colina Charities, um, HMSA, who 
who've been very generous, the Campbell, James Campbell Company, just people who really saw these kids' potential and, and gave. Because they were doing things with nothing. When we first started, we started in a classroom with no air conditioning, with very little equipment. And by the way, so heat isn't just bad for people, it's, it's bad so for bad. equipment. We would pack 50 kids, 40 kids in a classroom and it was hot and no air conditioning, but you know, those kids never grumbled. They never grumbled because they didn't have an air conditioned room or top of the line equipment like a lot of other schools did. Instead, they just started to create projects and they did some pretty good projects and people started to notice. That's what happened is people started to notice. How do they know they could do that? How, what got them started? You just, just you give them the tools. You, as, as educators, you know, are the team of educators, there was enough people out there that said, you can do it, of course you can do it. You make a video here, here's the camera, here's the tool, here's how you do it. The essence of video production, as I look at it, is storytelling. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what kind of experience do you think your students had in storytelling? They are born with a gift to tell a story. I really believe their success is because they were they're born with the gift to create. They, the kids out in Waianae, I really believe, are the most creative, loving storytellers. Um, because they don't grow up with a lot. I really believe it. They don't grow up with a lot. So they entertain themselves by um, playing the ukulele, t sitting around talking story. They draw, they doodle, they sing. And it carries over. When they come to us, they just, they're so strong. And th their heartfelt creativity carries over with this tool. All of a sudden, we have these expensive toys now that we give them, and we say, go create. And, and we just take to it. It is amazing. Now, you it's didn't incredible. have the star pupils of Waianae High School. Some of your kids were doing really poorly in other classes. Mm -hmm. They were reporting to school from their homes on the beach in tents. Mm -hmm. We have the homeless. We have, we have kids who, parents have been in jail. They are abused. They come to us. We know there, were a lot of dysfunction, uh, so much. And I understand. You know, that's my world. I grew up there, and I, I know that world. And they come to us and. We give them hope. It's for a lot of these kids. It's their security. We're their family. Uh, we give we we teach them a tool, and they become successful at it. And it's they they see something that they create, and it for their self esteem. It's wow, I did that. You know, they they it's it, it gives them hope, and they they realize I have just learned something that I can do for life, and it turns a lot of these kids' lives have been turned around. They've they would have dropped out, I really believe, if they, and they'll tell us that too, if it wasn't for this class, I would have dropped out, or I didn't know I was gonna go to college, or I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, and now so many of our kids are college graduates. They're being recruited They're by being recruited. television stations and, and advertising yes, agencies. Yes, 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 I remember when your sea riders first started doing public service announcements for various clients. You mm -hmm. you invited the business community to, to hire the kids and said, well, see what we can come up with for you. And I just remember as a professional television person at that time, how the students' work had so much more depth than what you would normally see in a PSA or public service announcement because the kids knew that world, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. they, when it was about crystal meth, yes. they brought a reality to it that yes. nobody had brought before. They know, these kids know what it's like to live in houses, in homes where there's crystal meth, where they have to be in a car where someone's been drinking. They know how it hurts. They know how it hurts. And it's, it, was, it was their stories. If you look at any of those PSAs, those are their stories. They knew that was either them or that was someone that they knew. And they were able to come up with the idea from the heart, from real life. And I think that's what makes their, they work so powerful. It's it's real stories. They tell their stories, whether it's a news story, a public service announcement, a commercial. It's they're just telling their story. You know, John Allen, who is the teacher now. He he, I hear him say this all the time. You know, no matter what piece you do, you you have to hit the emotion. If you can make someone laugh, you can make someone cry. You've done your job, and that's that's what you want to do as videographers, as filmmakers, whatever your piece is. You want to. Who's your subject? Who's your audience? And what's your purpose? And they do a good job. If you give up, you, you're certified a loser. If you try, 
you, you at least one in your book. Knowing the audience and the purpose for every video they produce, students at Sea Rider Productions have received rave reviews and numerous awards, including Robert F. Kennedy Foundation Journalism Honors and a prestigious National High School Emmy. By the way, it's not in an Emmy category for students from a low-income minority geographically isolated community. It's an Emmy open to the richest and poorest schools across the country. Why and I outdistanced everybody else. At National High School Emmy, they got a free trip to New York to share it with um, some of the top journalists in the country. And what was so unique about that is they showed it on these big screens and it was a paddling story. And it showcased Pokai Bay in Waianae, our ocean, our mountains, the story of paddling, how it's not just a sport, it's a way of life for us out in Waianae. And Katie Hoppy, the student who got up there and spoke, said how proud she felt to be able to share the culture of Hawaii at a national level, just to share what we do and to share their work and it was a very chicken skin moment. I cried, I sat there and I cried. It was such a proud moment. Candy Suiso, multimedia teacher at Waianae High School, is clearly very proud of her students' accomplishments. Historically, the school has turned in pretty dismal scores in standardized testing. It's excelling in its team-based multimedia program. Sea Rider Productions is housed in its own building on campus with 15 edit stations. High definition cameras, still cameras, and computers for students to work on the school newspaper, the yearbook, video news, and video productions. Two bold statements posted on the walls read, lead, follow, or get out of the way, and if can, can, if no can, no can. Tell me about if can, can. If can, can, if no can, no can. Because, you know, there's nothing worse, we feel, than saying you're going to do something and not do it and not follow through. And we tell these kids, if you're going to do something, if you're going to say you're going to do something, hold yourself to it and, and do it. Follow through and do it. Because really, there's nothing worse than not completing something that you've committed to. And if we could teach them now in school, it will carry over in life, in a job, in a marriage, in a relationship. And when you work in teams, you know other people are counting on you. Yes, because it's teamwork. And the good thing about our program is every, every project that these kids do is a team effort. And we always think, if you have, when you leave our program, if you have learned nothing about video production, about creating a web page, about a page layout, a newspaper, we hope you've really learned the importance of teamwork, cooperation. And getting things done on time? Ex meeting deadlines, respect, respect for self, respect for other people, respect for property. So if you're gonna say you're gonna do something, you better do it because if you don't, you're dropping the ball for your teammates. But if no can, no can. If no can, no can. And if you can't do it, it's okay. Just say you can't do it. But just don't say you're gonna do something if you can't do it because you let everybody down. So if can, can, if no can, no can, and it's been our mantra, and the kids, they get it, the kids get it. So it sounds like you don't care if your students become these video producers extraordinaire. It's whatever they want to do in life, and this is just a tool to help them get to there. To teach them. You know, my mother would always say, you do what you want to, you know, what's going to make you happy. But whatever you do, you do it the best that you can. If you're going to cook, if you're going to be a teacher, if you're going to be a lawyer, well, no matter what it is you're going to do, you you do the you do the best job you can possibly you you know possibly do and for our kids they might not be the videographers and the spielbergs and whatever um, we want them to know we want them to be the best at whatever they choose to be and be honest contributing citizens to our community to come back to give back and just to do what's right in life. Do what's right, even when no one's watching. You know, do what's right. What's the impact of uh, lead, follow, or get out of the way? <laughs> well, you be a leader. We want to also promote leadership and, and be a leader and lead or follow. If you're not, if you're not going to take the lead, then, then, then do what you're told to do or, or, or follow what needs to be done. And in this world, you know, if you're negative, 
And if you don't like what's going on or if you're going to whine and complain, then you know, get out of the way because we have so much work to do. You know, and if you're not going to move with us, get out of the way. With Candy Suiso guiding them, young people on Oahu's Leeward Coast are moving forward together as a team. And through Ms. Suiso's guidance, there are also opportunities for young people to return to the Wai'anae Coast to work and live. Here's a sampling of the work of Wai'anae High School graduates at the for-profit social enterprise Makaha Studios, located in the old Cornet building. Looking for the hottest place to go and get the games you really want? Well, look no further because GameStop has everything you need right here, right now. GameStop. From the hottest game titles to newest consoles, accessories, and more. Trade in your old games for That's new where they're based, in the old Cornet building. And it's, you know, people are, oh, that's kind of shady over there because you have a lot of the homeless that'll hang out there or the... Oh, a lot of illegal activity going on, and it's kind of scary sometimes to be there, but they're not afraid. That's where their office is. They're making the most of it. Uh, it's just their start. It's their humble beginning. They're going to grow, and they're going to flourish. I really believe that, and they, they believe that. They want to give back. They want to they grow that company. They want to they wanna stay in the community, which is good. We're finding out, because there are no jobs out in Waianae. Really, if you look at it, there's, it's a rural community. You have to drive out to work. And so this studio now is creating a lot of good jobs for these students that are coming out of Sea Rider Productions. It seems to me that something is happening on the Waianae Coast. It's, a, it's the can-do that you, that's mm -hmm. on the, your wall. If can, can. If no can, no can. But it's, we call it a movement. There's, there's just, it's really, it's this generation of, um, I would say the 20 to the 30 year olds I want to talk about. They get it. They are a generation I feel, we, we can feel very hopeful that they want to give back. They um, are not, at least the ones that we're working with in our community, they're not so wrapped up in making big bucks and they want to go and get educated, whether it's a trade school, whether it's through work or through college, and they want to come back into the community and they want to turn the community around so that people will no longer look at Waianae and say, oh, it's bad, they have the drugs, they have the pregnancy, their scores are low. They want to do some positive things and make some real positive changes for the community. And it's all being done from within. Yes, within With, with reaching out to uh, national grantors. Yes, yes, and, and national grantors are seeing what we're doing, and, and we're very thankful for that, that you have these national or local um, foundations and philanthropists that are saying, these, wow, these, this community is really trying to help themselves and we want to help them. And we know that money will dry out. And we, in fact, we want to get to the point where we don't have to ask anymore that we can be sustainable um, and, not, and, and create jobs enough where we can stop depending on, on grants. That's what we want for the future of, of our community. Where do you think this movement will take the Waianae Coast? I hope eventually it will take them out of poverty. It might take decades, but this is certainly a start. You have a group of young adults that are really making a difference because they have come back to the Waianae Coast and they are giving back and they believe in themselves and they're believing in the students that are under them and they're trying very hard to prove to the rest of the world that we're just as good as everybody else if you just give us a chance. Educator Candy Suiso returned to Waianae to live and work. She knows about students' pain and tough times because she too has first-hand experience. And your mom was a legendary teacher on the Waianae Coast, right? Oh, she, 31 years of her life, she dedicated her life to, to teaching out there. And really, that was her life. She impacted a, a community and 30 years just taught at Macaw Elementary School. She went there and she never left. Um, I remember the principal would always throw all of these hardcore kids and say, okay, Mrs. Smith, you're the one that's going to take these kids. And she would turn them around. She would just, she, she was mean, but she was very strict and she was very fair and she loved them all. And she did. She turned a lot of lives around. What kept her going? What kept her going is just seeing the results, seeing these kids turn around, you know, working out there in, in uh, Waianae. There's a lot of dysfunction. There's not a whole lot. 
it's we have a bad reputation out there. It's and um, she would take kids and really give them hope. She would let them know you can do anything you want. She would she would tell them that, and she would really make them believe that, you know, you can do anything that you want. And they would believe, and sure enough, they would. So many of them would turn their lives around. She believed in them, and I think that is why they they believed in themselves. She really she really instilled in them. Um, you can do you can do and you can be anything you want. You just have to believe in yourself. Did you ever see her at a moment where? where she just didn't have that hope and she was miserable about oh. something that had happened? Oh yeah, she went through, she was very, you know, she's, my mother, she literally raised four of us. She was, my mother and father divorced when I was nine. My older sister was 11, then I had a younger brother who was, I think, five, and then my other brother was three. And she just, her whole life was shattered. Um, moved us to Kauai, uh, had my grandparents take care of us. I can't, I can't do this. She moved to Makaha and just literally really had to get her life back together. And um, a year later we moved back and she remarried. And it was a, it was a, not a, there was a lot of, um, Dysfunction. I don't. I don't know what the right word would say, but um, there was. He, she married an alcoholic, and there was a lot of um, abuse. He did, didn't really work much, and um, she carried. She struggled. Um, she would live paycheck to paycheck, but, and there was a lot of times. I know it was hard. It was really hard. She couldn't provide. I think the way that she would want to for us. Uh, but she'd always say, you know, she'd, but she would always have a roof over our head. She, we would always have clothes on our body. We'd always have, we had each other. What and about food? We always had food on the table, always. My mother was the queen of spam. She knew how to cook <laughs> spam. She knew how to cook, cook corned beef hash. She knew how to make ends meet. You know, we always knew at the end of the month when the times were hard, a little harder, we'd have the bean soup and we'd have the ham hocks. And, we hated it, but actually it's something that we really love eating now. Mm -hmm. like, uh, we cook it and it's, it's good memories. It used to be bad memories, but there was always food on the table and clothes on our back and a roof over our head. And, and she, she kept us together. She, she raised four of us and it, you know, living out in Waianae, it would have been easy for any of us to either go the other way, but we all turned out really. It must have been hard for her. She was the, uh, authority at the school mm -hmm. and somebody who was seen as having her life all together mm -hmm. but then to go home and really have to scrounge mm -hmm. and, and work and uh, and scheme to to keep things together for your family she, I don't know how she did it I when I look back now I think I don't know how you did it and you know my sister and I talk about this all the time it's she to get away from what was going on at home a lot of times it was pretty it was nasty and it was pretty bad a lot of times and she would just block it out and work I think that was a lot of how she would run away from uh, what, what was happening at home with her, with, her, with her home life, with her husband, and she would just work. She would just involve herself with work and keep busy. And um, my sister and I talk about this all the time. We, we have so much of her in us. Because you, know, every, you work all because the time. Because we work all the time or we keep busy when we want to avoid something or, or we want to we just work, and so many times we think things that used to bother us, the things that she would say, or maybe some of the things that she would do, it would just drive us nuts. And now I hear myself say things that she would say, and you know, I, I, I find myself doing things that she would do, and I, I think, oh my gosh, I have become my mother. And it used to bother me, but now it's a good thing. You know, it's a really good thing. You were lucky that your mom um, lived long enough to see what you've mm -hmm. accomplished on the Waianae Coast. What did she say to you? <sighs> she was always proud of me. Um, she was just always proud of me. She would, um, she didn't say much, but I always knew. Um, I, I think she was most proud because she saw that um, you know, part of her lived through me and continues. Um, but she was always, I mean, she just always would tell me how proud she was 
of what I'm doing and the, and the work that I chose. And that um, sometimes teaching is not a very um, prestigious job and you will not make a lot of money. Um, it will not make you very rich with things and with money, but it will make you very rich with people. And um, she was right, you know, she was right. Life is all about people, about relationships, about um, making a difference in, in people's lives, in, um, in giving, in giving back. When you give, you give from the heart. And you don't expect anything back. you don't anything expect back. anything in return. You give because you want to, not because you want or expect anything in return. And you give from the heart when you give. Candy Suiso, raised in Waianae, returned to Waianae to live and work, and now she encourages others to do the same. Through Sea Rider Productions at Waianae High, she has created opportunities for students to learn life and workforce skills and to express their creativity through writing, audio and video production, and new media arts. Good stories have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And the story of trailblazing Candy Suiso and the multimedia students of Waianae High is still being written. An inspiring story for people in and far beyond the Waianae coast. I'm Leslie Wilcox of PBS Hawaii. Mahalo to Candy Suiso and to you for joining me on Long Story Short. Long Story Short with Leslie Wilcox is produced in HD by PBS Hawaii with Sony Technology. High definition, it's in Sony's DNA. I met you a long time ago in one of your Sea Riders first triumphs. Do you remember? I remember. That was our very first national recognition and it was the first time we were ever on TV. And you must have caught it because you contacted us and you put us on your early morning show. And we remember getting up early in the morning, leaving Waianae at four o'clock in the morning. I thought, oh my God, there's Leslie with us. <laughs> and she's a real person and she was really friendly. And, <laughs> and it was so exciting, we felt like rock stars. <laughs> and Thank you for that.